Hi everyone and welcome to Thursday, June 29th, General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. It will be more on a daily basis now. We are in the secret patio and if I play my cards right, I can just film as soon as I go home from work and then everything will be good. <laughs> but in any event, let's get right to it. Um, Alright, so at Carly's, Carly tells Bobby that her and Sonny aren't getting divorced and Dawson hears that and comes downstairs and she has an issue with that and she would like to bring it up right now. So Carly won't have the disrespect and Bobby tells Jocelyn that when she looks back on this she'll realize she didn't know as much as she thinks and Jocelyn says she knew this would happen the second Carly left. And Jocelyn uh, more sees the fact that like, you know, she was hanging out with a respectful boy and she's in trouble, but Carly runs around with Sonny who's like the opposite and like that's okay. Like, no, not in Jocelyn's world. Jocelyn is, according to the wiki, is 14, by the way. So she calls Carly a hypocrite and Carly won't have that. Uh, she says her life is complicated and Jocelyn asks like why she's going back. And Carly's like, all right, I'll tell you. Sorry, my glasses hurt the back of my ears because I'm wearing two pairs of them. So she says that, you know, she loves him and they're better together and they share a life and they share a family. And Jocelyn says that Sonny could never make it up to her. Uh, she used to love Sonny and now she'll always hate him. And if Carly goes back to Sonny, she'll have to go without her. And Joss wants to move with Jax in Australia before she moves in with Sonny, you know, again. And Jocelyn wants, you know, to just be away. And Carly has to think about that because she was going to go for the summer, but now she wants to go permanently. And by the time Jocelyn gets back, she'll probably be like 28, you know. So they're going to go to the park and because she still has to do her job. Uh, whether or not she wants to because she has to keep her commitment and Jocelyn feels that it's unfair sweetie like at the photo shoot Anina is brought along with Quinn to the Manlanders photo shoot and Amy is surprised because no one else is supposed to be there uh, she not so subtly tips Nathan off that it's Nina there at the shoot and Quinn wants Nina there Crimson is um, wants to do like an exclusive on Manlanders so Quinn has to take a call, call, can't talk, and Nina asks Amy why she's like panicking. What does she even have to do with all this? So Nina goes inside to figure out what's going on and Amy stops her. So she says, you know, she's Ask Man Lander's manager. That's what she does on the side. And Nina tells her to listen and agree. And then Amy says no and Nina barges in and Nathan, who was in the photo shoot room, is gone. Why? Why must they make such noise while I am filming? A video. It's just rude to be quite honest with you. I'm just kidding. How are they supposed to know I'm filming a video? Uh, so in any event, uh, Nina is confused as to why the room is empty and Nathan, his shoe, like you can see, his, he's standing behind the screen and you can see his shoes and they're like these custom shoes that Nina had gotten him and so she knows it's him. So Nathan says that he's the face of the brand but they have to keep up this facade and you know he's asked me in Landers and she asked how he got involved in all this and he says he's doing Amy a favor but it's Amy's decision whether or not she tells her why because that's her secret so Amy does tell her and Nina thinks they're both incredible um, that you know Amy's doing this for her brother and that Nathan's doing this amazing favor for Amy um, and she feels that this needs to be an exclusive for Crimson or else Quinn is going to call more publications and you know, Nina will keep the secret, but these other publications will absolutely not keep the secret. Uh, so, uh, in Ava's room, uh, Ava says that she can't remember um, what she said to Sonny and Carly, you know, because she's answering Dante's questions. Uh, but Dante isn't leaving just yet. Uh, she won't admit to anything. Uh, he says that he's just talking to her about his brother, and, you know, Dante says that he would bet she wants redemption or maybe give people closure. You know, Morgan would want her to just unburden herself. And she says the chaos and turmoil Morgan felt is done. He's at peace. Yeah, because you were involved in, you know, killing him, but whatever. And she says that, you know, she's been thinking about uh, the future and penance and that she's living in purgatory right now and it's never going to end. This is her fate and she won't allow herself to be punished any more than that. Okay. So she says uh, when the air touches her skin, it's excruciating, which I absolutely believe. She, I mean, there's no doubt she is in excruciating, unimaginable pain. 
um, you know, come back when he knows what that's like. And he says that she's just a coward who's afraid to face up to the consequences of her actions. So then Scott comes in and Dante leaves. And Dante is watching intently while Scott and Ava are talking to each other and through the window. And Scott checks that she didn't sell him out. And then Bobby comes in to talk to Dante and she doesn't know if she'll ever confront Scott about his involvement. Uh, she knows all his excuses and Bobby just wants Ava brought to justice. Uh, Bobby also thinks Morgan would want Dante to enjoy his life and not be constantly fixated on this and not to suffer. You know, live his life and be happy and he's like, yeah, but if I do that, you know, and Ava doesn't see the inside of a jail cell, Sonny's never going to be satisfied. So, and also, wait, I had a thought. I was kind of thinking when Dante was saying that about Scott, he's good. I thought he might want Bobby to like wear a wire and get Scott talking, but who knows if that'll happen. If it does, come back to this video and tell me how amazing I am. So Ava asks Scott for a favor. Stop with the lies. She releases him. And Scott's like, no, <laughs> she, but she says she doesn't want him here. They had a good run, but it's time for it to end. At Kelly's, Laura tells Kevin about the Spencer and Alexis talk. Uh, Chandler calls Laura and tells her where Spencer is. So they leave to go get Spencer, and she knows exactly why Spencer would go see Sunny. At P Pizzulos? I feel like it's Pizzulos, and I've been saying it wrong for two videos. Oh, well. Spencer asks Sunny to eliminate Valentine. What's like, I need a drink of water. Sonny sits him down, and Spencer says he's tried to do this all the other ways, he's gone the legal routes, and he's getting nowhere, and there's no other way. He wants justice and peace, and Sonny says if he grants what Spencer's asking, he won't have peace, just the opposite. Sonny says every time he's done something wrong, especially when he was young, it costed him, and he doesn't want Spencer to have to pay that cost because there's no coming back, you're forever changed. It's like a horcrux. Basically, literally like a horcrux. So he doesn't say that, I'm saying that. Because if Sonny knows what a horcrux is, I'll give like Cassie $100. So Spencer doesn't see the problem. Yo, know, he's just taking back what's his. He's going to be a Cassidine of Cassidines when he gets older and never recast Spencer. This, um, Nicholas Bechdel has this role for life as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so Sonny says he wouldn't be able to live with himself if he helped Spencer, and Spencer wouldn't be able to either. So Spencer's disappointed. Uh, he still tries to convince him, uh, but Spencer, he, he wants his dad back, is what it comes down to. And Sonny says he, w his dad, wanted Spencer to be better than Sonny was and better than he was. He wanted him to be a better person. And they share their respective losses, you know, with Morgan. Nicholas, you know, revenge doesn't fill that hole in your chest that loss leaves. And Spencer hugs Sonny, he's crying, and he tells Spencer he's selling Pizzulos. And sometimes you have to let things go that you love. Uh, Spencer, oh, Laura and Kevin come in. Uh, Sonny had called them too before, uh, after Chandler did. Uh, Laura says if Spencer doesn't stop bullying Chandler, she's going to fire him and send Spencer to a boarding school in Montana that has no technology. I've been to Montana, and let me tell you, if you love mountains and lakes, there's no need for technology. Because it's true. It's beautiful. I still have Montana videos I need to get up, and they will be going up at the end of the summer. I promise. It's been a crazy last few years, but everything is okay now. Uh, she makes Spencer apologize to Sonny for putting him in an awkward position. You have no idea. Uh, and Sonny asks to speak with Kevin for a second. So he tells him to have Laura keep an eye on him. And it's great that he's there to help too. So Carly comes in and tells Sonny about the party that Jocelyn had and she had a meltdown and she feels betrayed. Uh, back at Kelly's, Spencer immediately goes into apology mode. He says he's accepting his life for now. Uh, Spencer's going to camp tomorrow and he's helping clean the patio today and right now we're in the secret patio that no one knows where it is except the people, people, no I'm just kidding a secret patio um, and he's not thrilled about having to do more chores but that's what happens <laughs> so now end scene uh, Quinn comes back into the room Nina tells the good news about Crimson getting the exclusive and she thinks this will be a match made in heaven Dante feels that he's responsible for putting Ava behind bars to keep Sunny at bay 
Ava tells Scott goodbye. Laura and Kevin know this isn't even close to over with Spencer. Uh, she gives Kevin an out, but he's not leaving. Uh, Carly's unsure what Jax would do in this situation if Jocelyn came to him with this because she knows Jax is a good enough parent not to play into Jocelyn's game and not to like pit them against each other but like Sonny isn't his favorite person either and like having his daughter live with him like he loves her so I'm sure he'd love that so like it's very hard and Carly's intent on finding a way to make this work but honestly I don't see a way it's gonna work so that is it for what, uh, the 29th, um, I will see you uh, in 0.2 seconds, but if you're not tomorrow, for more General Hospital, and I will see you then. Have a great day, and uh, yeah, everything's good.